Good morning, everyone. Anyway, we're going to be following morning prayer today. It's always nice to do different things on different weeks. So do look at your sheet, and uh, we're going to say together the bits that are in bold. So let us just have a moment of silence as we come to the Lord this morning. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. We've now got a song of worship to enjoy. Purify my heart, let me be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart, let me be as gold. to be holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy, set apart for you, my master, ready to open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, 
set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So we've now got um, the psalm for the day. And today we're reading from Psalm 119, verses 105 to 112. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it, that I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing praise of my mouth and teach me your ways. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. Now this morning's scripture reading is taken from the Gospel of John. And we're reading from chapter 5, verse 30 to 47. By myself, I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just. For I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not valid. There is another who testifies in my favor, and I know that his testimony about me is valid. You have sent to John, and he has testified to the truth. Not that I accept human testimony, but I mention it that you may be saved. John was a lamp that burned and gave light, and you chose for a time to enjoy his light. I have testimony weightier than that of John, for the very work that the Father has given me to finish, and which I am doing, testifies that the Father has sent me, and the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. You have never heard his voice, nor seen his form, nor does his word dwell in you, for you do not believe the one he sent. You deliberately study the scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept praise from men, but I know you. I know that you do not have the love of God in your hearts. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. But if someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe if you accept praise from one another, yet make no effort to obtain the praise that comes from the only God? But do not think I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom your hopes are set. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But since you do not believe what he wrote, how are you going to believe what I say? So this whole passage is Jesus testifying about who he truly is. And the language is quite confusing at times. He seems almost sort of re well, repeating himself for our benefit. Um, and so because there's so much in this passage, I'm actually just going to take a couple of verses this morning. And we're just going to be looking at verse 39 and 40. So I'm going to read those again. And I'm going to read them from the Message Bible. You have your heads in your Bibles constantly because you think you'll find eternal life there. But you miss the forest for the trees. These scriptures are all about me. And here I am, standing right before you. And you aren't willing to receive from me the life that you say you want. I think there's enough in there for us to think about this morning. So as Jesus mentions, his listeners were studying the scriptures to find the Messiah. They were so focused on their particular way of seeking, their particular way of thinking, that this was the only way that they were missing the Messiah altogether. They were entrenched in how they thought the Messiah should come or arrive or be. And we're a bit like that today, but in different ways. 
Generally, our society doesn't normally spend time studying the Bible to find God. Instead, it seeks him in scientific answers, factual knowledge, and a hope that material success will bring some type of eternal joy. Jesus was pointing out to the religious leaders that they were reading the scriptures in the wrong way. First, they were reading it with a closed mind. They were not searching it for God, but to find arguments to support their own position. I'm sure we can all draw parallels in today's Christian culture of that. Secondly, they regarded God as having given men a written revelation. The revelation of God is through a revelation in history. It is not God speaking, but acting. The Bible is a record of his revelation. But instead, they worship the words rather than his actions. We should always read the Bible as it all pointing to Jesus. The Bible is a gift from God, but the scripture is not to give life, but to point to Jesus who can give us life. I've been reading a really interesting book called The Way of Paradox, and it simplifies for us the teachings of a famous 11th century theologian called Eckhart. The book highlights that in the world and the church, we have a cultural perspective of God as out there, as other. So we're also missing the point. God is to be found here in our hearts and our soul. If we can't find him in here, how will we be able to find him out there? I think the church does preach Christ, but he is seen as someone external to ourselves. But God is a reality to be experienced within. And I think this message is sometimes lost. The external man of Jesus is now not so interesting or appealing in society. So now our faith is losing its credibility. And some of the other thoughts from this book that have been really interesting for me were that it says that many people are not actually rejecting God, but the limited images of God which hinder our perception of him in reality. Well, the world has stopped seeing Jesus as a mystery. And in doing so, we've stopped seeing ourselves as a mystery. A Christ who is outside cannot heal that which is inside that which is deep, eternal and private, the thing that we're all actually seeking. If we can teach people to find God within, to be able to remain in communion with God in a world of hustle, activity and judgment, then I'd love to see our churches full of people seeking mystery, adventure and truth. We need to learn new ways of knowing God. Factual, philosophical, and theological knowledge cannot grasp the whole reality of God. And there are so many other ways of knowing God, either through relationship, through memory, imagination, intuition. These are deeper ways of knowing that our society doesn't give much time to. Jesus suggests we look up from our factual studies and notice him inside of us, in each other in creation. Being open to new ways of knowing God can lead to a closer union and a spiritual adventure. So here in this passage, as today, God reveals himself to us through scripture, through the church, through sacrament, but in relationships, activities, but they are not God himself. And that's what Jesus is saying. He says, there is so much more to God that you can ever imagine or understand. He is not to be found through only one way. Yet we often cling to one of these as if they were the end and not the means. And that sometimes becomes a type of idolatry. Now, worshipping God and noting him is actually a leap into the void. Sounds scary. But as humans, we do love the lure of mystery, adventure, and truth, if we can be brave enough to let go of our comfort zone and open our eyes to a wider wisdom and knowledge of God. We are not just made to relate, but also to unite with God, and only Jesus can lead us in that communion. Let us search our own souls where there is treasure waiting to be uncovered. Mystery is God's very nature. So 
So what I want us to do now is just, just spend a few moments in silence as we contemplate these ideas. Ask God to help you to learn new ways of knowing him and to reflect on any limited images of God which have hindered our perception. Lord, as we gather all our thoughts to you, you have given all to us. To you, Lord, we return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give us only your love and grace. That is enough for us. Amen. Today's collect, the prayer for today for the church. Heavenly Father, your son battled with the powers of darkness and grew closer to you in the desert. Help us to use these days of Lent to grow in wisdom and prayer that we may witness to your saving love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So looking at our sheet, we're going to say the Benedictus together. If you join with me in the bold. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I'm just going to have a short time now of prayer for the world and our community. Heavenly Father, we come before you today to worship you. But Lord, we come with heavy burdens, personal ones and world ones. Lord, we bring before you the things on our hearts in the headlines. We pray for your continual work in the Ukraine and Russia situation, Lord. We pray and ask and cry for your peace in that situation. We thank you for all the good work that is being done to help. We pray that you will be found by so many through this awful situation. We pray for your protection over the churches and over the Christian communities who are in the midst of that war. We pray for wisdom for leaders, that seeking peace would be their priority. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring before you that very stark image. I don't know if you saw the headlines of all the men in El Salvador were going to prison, being led through the streets. It was a difficult sight to see. We pray, Lord, that you would just make that an opportunity of revival somehow through that awful situation, through that new enormous prison that has been made, that you will be found in the midst of that place. In the midst of their despair, Lord, will there be revival in that place, I pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church here, for the leadership, for the government, for all the difficult political situations that are going on. I pray that you would give leaders the wisdom to hold the tension, Lord. I pray that all Christians in this country would desire to be in union rather than apart. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for our community here in New Barnet. Thank you, Lord, for all the love and support that is given in so many ways by so many different charities and people working for the good of community. I pray you protect all the charities, Lord, that work in this space. We lift you now all the refugees who are struggling, all those who are homeless. And I pray, Lord, that they would find help in our community. May they know the hand of God in their life today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we bring before you our own personal burdens and concerns for our family, for ourselves, whatever is going on in your life, lift up to God now. May you see healing in those situations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us say together on the back um, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're going to have another song of worship now. Yeah. 
we go into the world to walk in God's light and to rejoice in God's love and to reflect God's glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.